I'm Stephen Drakeford, your honorary assistant. Father Don has asked uh, a number of us to sort of make a point about what we're hoping for this, uh, this Advent season. I've been thinking about that. Of course, I want the pandemic to be over and I want everyone to get vaccinated so that it will be over. But what I've been thinking is that um, I think everyone's spiritual life waxes and wanes. It goes up and down from times. And I've been on a waning period. And I think what I'd like to have happen for me personally, this uh, this Advent, is that I would draw closer to God again. Not that I'm that far apart, but there's just that that feeling of, uh, of waning, and I'm tired of it. So I love Advent, I love the season of Advent, I love the anticipation, I love the themes of, uh, of Advent. So I'm really looking forward to reconnecting with God. So my hope for this Advent is that uh, I would reconnect with God better. And I guess that's also my, uh, my hope for you. Thanks. I'm looking to rekindle the spirit of Christmas. Have it last longer than throwing out the tree and returning gifts. Growing up, we celebrated Christmas twice in my home. December 25th, gifts and turkey. January 7th, no gifts except chocolate, church, and not turkey. My mother always said the seventh was the real Christmas. And perhaps that's the feeling I wanna resurrect. Less Christmas shopping madness and more peace on earth, goodwill to men, women, and animals and the climate and the world. And yes, to have it all the year long. This year for Advent, I am hopeful that as we spend yet another Christmas season in the midst of COVID, that we're all able to find ways to celebrate in a way that is both safe and also that feels normal. I hope that this year we're able to uh, take our experiences from past uh, COVID Christmases and I have new traditions that are equally satisfying and meaningful to us. So this year, I hope that we can all just enjoy Christmas just as we always did, even though things won't be quite the same as usual once again. O tiny hope within our hopelessness, come to be born to bear us to our birth. Whenever I think of hope, I think of a, a time, it must have been, but it would be 18 years ago, when my first niece was born. She was born right about this time of year. In fact, just a couple of days ago, we celebrated her 18th birthday. But I remember I was teaching at a high school, and it was a time in my life when just a lot of things were going on. And I was really uncertain about life. I was confused, I was struggling. And to be honest, I wasn't feeling entirely hopeful. I was really having a hard time at that point. And then I got word from my brother that his wife was going into labor. And he asked whether or not I could come home and, and to be with him in hospital. And it was one of the most powerful experiences of my life that I can still vividly remember. I heard the first cry of my niece. And moments later, my brother brought her out in his arms. She was so little. And he placed her into my arms. And to my surprise, he said, Behold your goddaughter. I remember just crying at that moment. Because in the strangest of way, all the great problems I had, all the struggles I had in life seemed to fade away in that moment. And in my hands, I held hope. As I saw the beauty of new life in my knees and how beautiful she was. And that sense of hopefulness remained with me for throughout the coming days. In fact, the next morning I was 
driving on my way to the high school where I was teaching early in the morning. It must have been something like 7 a.m. or something like that. And over across the horizon came the sun with beautiful orange and red light piercing across the early blue sky. And I had hope. That occasion taught me a lot to, to keep my eyes open, to listen carefully. Because sometimes those signs of hope, those things that instill a sense of hopefulness in us, come in very small ways. And I think that's what Advent and Christmas is about paying close attention to the little details in life because it is in those that we see and we find hope. Hope that our God is doing a new thing. I'll just conclude here briefly with a poem and I actually read a couple lines from it in the beginning. It comes from this book Sounding of Seasons by the British poet and priest Malcolm Geet, and it's called O Manual. So I'd like to read that now. Because he has this wonderful line in it, in which he says, O tiny hope within our hopelessness, come to be born, come to bear us to our birth. So let me read this whole poem, and then invite you to just listen. O come, O come, and be our God with us. O long sought witness for a world without. O secret seed, O hidden spring of light. Come to us, wisdom. Come, unspoken name. Come, root and king, and key and holy flame. O quickened little wick, so tightly curled, be folded with us into time and place. Unfold for us the mystery of grace and make a womb of all this wounded world. O heart of heaven beating in the earth, O tiny hope within our hopelessness, come to be born, to bear us to our birth, to touch a dying world with new made hands and make these rags of time our swaddling bands.